what's going on everybody welcome to the channel and today what i got here is the t8sg jumper remote control once again now this is the multi-protocol remote control that can bind to just about anything that is out there and it is one of my favorite transmitters and i also have the theory b bison 150 it is the 150 millimeter micro fpv racer bind and fly version and it comes with a d8 fr sky receiver now i have not done a review on this model as of yet i just took it out of the box and put on the pagoda antenna and i secured down the receiver antenna with a zip tie and some electric tape now this is a d8 receiver that i have not seen before it comes with a ipx connector antenna so it is a little upgrade from the ones that came with models before so what we are going to do today is we are going to set up a brand new model on the jumper remote we're going to bind it to the d8 receiver on the fury v bison 150 we're going to go ahead and assign switches on the jumper remote as well and we're going to go into beta flight and we're going to do the whole configuration all right so let's go ahead and check that out all right so here we have the t8sg jumper remote ready to go to set up a brand new model so let's go ahead and power up the transmitter and hit the enter button and we are currently on the fr sky model that i've created now i bind all of my fr sky models to this particular model but what we are going to do now is we're going to set up a brand new model just for this quadcopter so let's go ahead and hit enter and hit enter in the model menu hit enter in the model setup and we're going to load up a vacant slot here we're going to scroll on down until we get a vacant model and looks like number 14 is available we'll skip number 13 and what we are going to do is scroll on down into the model set up page and the tx power at the moment is set to 10 milliwatts what i want to do is increase that tx power you can increase it by pressing this button all the way up to 150 milliwatts and you can decrease it with this button on the left and so on so 150 milliwatts is what i want so i'm going to leave it at that i'm going to scroll on down and it is set on devo uh, receiver protocol so i'm going to scroll and find the fr sky which is the d8 receiver protocol and there i just passed it so fr sky and we're going to go into the bind button and that is it the transmitter is now ready to bind all right now that the jumper remote is ready for binding we have the quadcopter ready to go here as well as a battery to power up the quadcopter so what we are going to do is on the receiver there's a bind button so what we are going to do is down press on the bind button and power up the quadcopter at the same time which will power up the receiver and put the receiver in a binding mode and at which time we are going to down press on that enter button to bind and it should bind the jumper remote to the d8 receiver so let's go ahead and check that out get the battery ready for powering up but don't power it up yet go ahead and down press on that bind button and then power up the quadcopter and hit this enter button and at which time that light should go off and yes it did so we have successfully bound the d8 receiver to the jumper remote and that is easy as that so let's go ahead and exit out from there and power up the quadcopter once again to make sure that we are bound all right we got solid blue light and let's go ahead and turn off the jumper and see what happens to that solid blue light there you go it is blinking that means we are disconnected let's go ahead and turn the jumper remote back on and see if we rebind check that out solid blue light we have successfully bound the d8 receiver to the jumper remote all right now that we have successfully bound the quadcopter to the jumper remote let's go ahead and give the model a name right now it just says none on there so let's go ahead and go into the model menu model setup and right here let's scroll down to where it says model name and hit enter and scroll down to the delete button and let's go ahead and delete whatever it says on there and let's give a new model name for this quadcopter i'm going to name it bison 150 so let's go ahead and 
go over to the B. Let's give it a capitalize first. Let's go over to the B and hit enter. And then I'll just do the whole thing in capital. So B, I, S, O, N, space, number, one, five, zero, and we are done. Bison 150. All right, now that we have finished setting up the model name, we need to assign some switches to this model, and we need three switches. Uh, we need one to arm the motors, we need one to change the modes, and we need one for the buzzer. This quadcopter comes with a buzzer. So we're gonna set up three switches. So let's go ahead and hit enter, go into the model menu, and go into the mixer, hit enter. And here we already have four channels already set up to AETR. So let's scroll on down. We're gonna set up channel five, channel six, and channel seven. Channel 5 would be Auxiliary 1, uh, in which we are going to set up the arming switch. Channel 6 will be Auxiliary 2, which will be the mode switch. And Channel 7 will be Auxiliary 3, which will be the, the buzzer switch. So let's go on over to Channel 5, where it says None. We're going to hit Enter, and you're going to scroll over to where it says None, and change that to Simple. Scroll down to where it says None. Now here you can assign any of these switches to that channel. I want to assign this switch here for the arming. So I'm going to go ahead and toggle that switch that will assign that particular switch to channel five. And you're going to scroll up and you're going to hit save. And there you go, channel five is set. I'm going to go to channel six. Now you're going to hit enter one more time and you're going to scroll over to where it says none change that to simple go on down to where it says none once again and this is going to be auxiliary 2 which i'll use this switch here for the modes so i'm going to go ahead and toggle it and we should have that switch up here here go on over to save hit save and channel 6 is set go on down to channel 7 um, i already have it as a simple now go ahead and enter and scroll down to where it says none and this will be the buzzer switch so i'm going to assign this switch right here for the buzzer so i'm going to go ahead and toggle it so it has assigned that switch for the buzzer which is auxiliary three go on over to save hit enter and we are done we have successfully set up three switches for auxiliary one two and three all right, here we are in beta flight. So let's go ahead and hook up the quadcopter. I'm going to hook up the quadcopter's flight controller to the micro USB connector and put it on a flat level surface. And I'm going to get the other end of the USB connector and plug it into the computer. Yes, we have connection and we are in beta flight. So let's check it out. Now, the first thing you wanna do is hit that calibrate accelerometer and calibrate the quadcopter. And as you can see, we have beta flight 3.2.0 firmware pre-installed and it is the Omnibus SD version. And we also have a craft name. It is already set to Dark Max. Oh, that's strange. I thought this was the Bison. Oh, wow. So it has the craft name as Dark Max. That is kind of cool. All right. So we have calibrated the accelerometer on this page, and that is all we need to do here. Let's go on over to the ports page, and we have the USB VCP set to configuration MSP, and that is how the quadcopter is communicating to the computer. Now we have the UART6 on a serial RX turned on, and that should be correct. So let's go on over to the configurations tab. And here we have 
ESC motor features already selected to D-Shot 600 and we have the motor stop turned on. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the motor stop and the motor idle throttle value percent is set on 4.5. I'm going to go ahead and hit that to 6. So I'm going to leave that on 6. Let's go on over to the gyro update frequency. It already is set to 8 kilohertz and the PID loop frequency is set to 2 kilohertz. I'm going to set that to 8 and see if that works out. I'm going to leave the accelerometer turned on and yeah, it says dark max on here on the personalization for the craft name. I'm going to change that to B I S O N space one four one five zero. So we got Bison 150 as the craft name. And on the receiver mode, we got the serial based receiver. That is correct. And we are already chosen S bus for the serial receiver provider. So that is correct. We got the FR Sky D8 receiver. So let's go and scrolling on down. And we see that it has LED strip turned on. And this does have LED lights and the OSD is also turned on and it has Betaflight OSD. I'm going to turn on the anti-gravity as well as the dynamic filter. And that is it. So I'm going to hit save and reboot. Okay, let's go back to configuration and check out the CPU load. It is at 6% and it is handling the 8 kilohertz and 8 kilohertz so that is awesome let's go on over to power and battery and lower down the minimum cell voltage down to 3.0 and the warning cell voltage i'm gonna go down to 3.2 and that is good for now so i'm gonna go ahead and hit save okay let's go on over to the pid tuning tab and we see that it has Betaflight default PIDs so we're just going to leave it at that now let's go on over to the receivers tab and check it out here the quad cutter is staying still because I don't have the jumper remote turned on so let's go ahead and turn it on and we have connected and we already set on AETR 1234 and the quad cutter is in a slight rotation and the reason for that is because the midpoints have not been set yet so we need to go ahead and set the midpoints so let's go into the jumper remote and go on over to model menu down to mixer and to aileron elevator throttle and rudder throttle we don't have to set the midpoints but elevator aileron and throttle we do so let's go ahead and hit enter on elevator which is the roll. So let's go on down to where it says sub trim. And here you want to decrease the value and increase the value with these two buttons here. And we look at it, uh, the roll, the value is at 1516. So we're going to go ahead and decrease the value. So down to 1500 so as you can see it is going down to 1506 1505 and get it close to or right on 1500 and we are done so let's go ahead and exit out and go on down to elevator which is the the pitch forward and backward so let's go ahead and hit that stick right in the dead center and hit enter and scroll down to where it says a sub trim and decrease the value with this button and increase the value with this button right now it's set on 1521 so I'm going to go ahead and decrease the value to 1500 1507 1503 and 1500 all right so we are set so let's go ahead and exit out from there and we're gonna skip throttle and go into the rudder hit enter 
go on down to where it says sub trim and do the yaw midpoint and it's set on 1525 so we need to decrease the value as you can see the quadcopter is just spinning in a yaw rotation now so we need to fix that and we are almost there and we are at 1500 so let's go ahead and exit out from there and we have successfully set up the midpoint so as you can see the quadcopter is in a still position that is what happens when you let go of the sticks it should fly in that manner now let's check the endpoints so i'm going to go ahead and put my throttle all the way up throttle all the way down now all the way down endpoint is set on 1118 which is too high because the stick low threshold here is at set at 1100 so this value right here the throttle endpoint the bottomest lowest point uh, value should be lower than 1100 or it will not arm even though you got everything correct so we're gonna go ahead and set the endpoints here so let's go on over to throttle hit enter scroll down to where it says scale minus and it says 100 so i got my throttle all the way down and i'm going to decrease the value with this button here and increase the value with this button here so let's go ahead and decrease the value oops what i need to do is increase the value to make it go lower on this one here and let me move my cursor out of the view so increasing the value makes it go minusing down to we want to get it close to 1000 as close as possible to 1000 it's at 1003 so that is just right and we're going to go ahead and scale plus scroll down to scale plus where it says scale plus and we're going to adjust the highest end point it is at 1915 so we're going to go ahead and increase that value to close to as 2000 so oops i just bypassed 2000 so 1995 that is good enough for me so let's go ahead and set the end points for the other three roll pitch and yaw so let's go on over to exit and go on over to aileron hit enter scroll down to scale minus would be roll left that would be the maximum lowest value so let's go ahead and change that it is set on 1103 so i'm going to bring it down to as close to 1000 as possible okay 1003 that is good enough and let's scroll down to where it says scale plus and to the right maximum position of the stick and change that it is set on 1898 so let's go ahead and increase that value the end point to close to 2000 okay 1994 that is good enough for me so let's go ahead and exit out of there we have set the aileron end points let's go on to elevator which is the pitch so the lowest point would be there so let's go ahead and hit enter scroll down to where it says scale minus and set the bottom end point and it is set on 1096 so let's go ahead and decrease that value down to close to 1000 okay 1005 and that is set so we're going down to scale plus that will be the uppermost pitch value so let's go ahead and change that value it is set on 1893 so let's raise it up to close to 2000 as possible okay nine 2001 1997 that is good enough for me so we have set the end points on the elevator so let's go ahead and exit out of there let's do our yaw which is rudder so leftmost point will be the lower um, possible endpoint and to the right will be the maximum endpoint so let's go ahead and 
hit enter, scroll down to scale minus, and put the stick all the way to the left, and check out the yaw. It is at 1093. So let's go ahead and decrease the value to closest to 1000 as possible, 1001, and scroll down to scale plus, put the yaw stick all the way to the right, and it is set on 1890. So let's go ahead and increase the value close to 2000. 1997, that is good enough for me. All right, so let's go ahead and exit out of the mixer. And that is how you set the midpoints and the endpoints. Okay, what happened to the midpoints? It has moved a little bit, as you can see. The quadcopter is in a spin because of the calibration of the endpoints. Now the midpoints have gotten a little bit messed up. So let's go ahead and reset the midpoints. I'm going to go into the mixer. And the roll is off by just one point. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to sub trim and decrease the value here to 1500 there you go and exit out of there and go to elevator hit enter and scroll back down to where it says sub trim and it is set on 1504 so let's go ahead and move that back down to 1500 all right so there you go hit enter again go down to rudder and hit enter, scroll down to sub trim, and it is set on 1502. So let's go on down to 1500. All right, and exit out. All right, now it's complete. The midpoints and the endpoints have been set just right. As you can see, the quadcopter is in a stay still. That is how you want this. All right. All right, we are in the modes tab now and we need to do some changes here. Arming is set to aux two by default. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that to aux one to the top of the switch. Angle mode is set to aux one. So I'm gonna change that to aux two to the bottom of the switch. We got the beeper turned on. I'm not gonna turn on the horizon mode and it is set on aux four. Set it to aux three at the top of the switch. And we got air mode. We're gonna set that to aux two to the top of the switch as well. And nothing else is on. So let's go ahead and hit save. And check it out. Air mode is turning on. And beeper, that is working and angle mode okay and arming all right so everything is working good in the modes tab okay so we don't need to go into the motors tab to calibrate our escs because we are running d shot 600 so let's go on over to the osd tab and let's go ahead and turn off the cross bars artificial horizon timer one leave timer two fly mode and craft name and i'm gonna hit ntsc to move the craft name to where i want it and the battery voltage to where i want it and the fly minutes down to the right all right, so that is just about it in the OSD. I'm gonna hit it back to auto and then hit save. All right, so the last thing I wanna do, or one of the first things that I normally do is I do go into CLI, do a dump and save the initial file. Uh, so I didn't do that. What I'm gonna do is type in dump now. So this is 
the dump file with all of the changes that we have just made as well. So I'm just going to save this one. Okay, and right click and copy it and open up a text file and go ahead and paste it on there and save it just in case and that is just about it in beta flight so i'm going to go ahead and disconnect all right and we are good to go all right so we have set up a brand new model on the jumper remote we have successfully bound our jumper remote to the quadcopter and we have set up auxiliary switches on the jumper remote and went into beta flight and configured everything in beta flight so we are good to go so let's go ahead and check it out with a real battery turning on the jumper remote and we are set to bison 150 plugging in the quadcopter that's music to my ears. Let's see if the arming is working. All right. Nice. All right. Let's see if the mode switches are working. Yes. And the buzzer. All right. Everything is working fine. All we need to do now is put on some props, take it out to the field, and fly the new fury b bison 150 so that is it for now for this video thank you so much for tuning in and watching have a great day and we'll see you again next time